that was the easiest set by far. Vanilla Gorilla merch coming soon. What do I do a physique competition? Hell fucking no. Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video. So we are back here in the powerlifting mecca city gym. We're here and we're gonna focus on the powerlifting split that I've been following for the last three weeks in order to absolutely and utterly smash 180 kilos out of the park in about a week to 10 days time. Let's get straight into the video. If I'm being brutally honest, the last week or so of training hasn't been the best. Gar's not the happiest in the world with me because I haven't been able to religiously stick to his wonderful, wonderful program that he's put a lot of time and effort into. I just fast forwarded a couple of days ago to week three of what is a four week program. Today is going to be a light bench day and it's also the first day in which I'm able to squat in about two weeks. Exercise number one is the bench press. Jay pointed out that the last time that I was sat on this bench, I failed 180 kilos, not once, but fucking twice. So I've been playing around with a bit of a different grip. So what I actually did is kind of brought my hand in about a thumb distance away from where the nerding on the bar here starts. And I found it a little bit more comfortable because I tend to be a little bit tricep dominant when it comes to the bench press, despite the fact that my chest is absolutely huge. So that's the warm-up sets over and done with. Set number one, as I said, 145 kilos for three, three, three repetitions. Didn't feel too light. My first ever powerlifting session was like a couple of weeks ago and Gar was here watching me. I said to Gar, I was like, on the way up, it felt really, really sluggish. And then I moved on to the back offsets. Compared to how it felt when I was working up to the top weight, it felt a hell of a lot lighter. It felt like, and, and then Gar came to educate me on the fact that that's essentially what the gist of powerlifting is, working up to a really, really heavy top set. And then the back offsets gonna feel a little bit lighter as a result of that exertion, I don't know what it's called, post-activation, something fucking or another, some nerd can fill in the gaps in the comments. <laughs> After set number one, which was 145 kilos, three repetitions, what Gar has down is two to three sets of three repetitions taking off between 14 to 17%. So I'm gonna go with the lowest increment. I'm gonna take off 14% off 145, roughly 125 kilos. Going back to what I said earlier, so when I worked up in the warm-ups, I did 120 as a warm-up set, and that felt a hell of a lot more sluggish than the 125 that I just done there. So as you come back down, you're gonna find that the weight that you're using is a little bit lighter, or feels a little bit better, or moves a little bit better. You should try it out. If you are gonna try it out, come into City Gym and get a program. I was having a discussion with Jonathan earlier about like people's different preferences when it comes to like rest periods between sets. Me coming from a bodybuilding sort of background, and Jay said this as well, that my preference has always been leaning towards kind of shorter rest periods, you know, not resting so long. What I would say is on exercises in which you're really, really focused on progressing, try to optimize the environment as best you can. Try to maybe rest a little bit on the longer end of the spectrum, but then for like maybe back offsets, accessories like let's say dumbbell bench press or your bicep curls, make your rest periods a little bit shorter. That was the easiest set by far. The next exercise I'm actually a little bit excited about is squat, three sets, four repetitions, anywhere between 137 to 142 and a half kilos. Uh. Excuse me. <laughs> I keep forgetting you've headphones in. When I asked Gar to design my program, he did ask me, do I want to just get my bench press numbers up? If I'm trying to get my bench up, I may as well just see what my squat and my deadlift could be as well, because I've never historically consistently deadlifted. Squats I've never really consistently done in the last number of years. So it's like, fuck it, those numbers aren't where they should be for a man of my size and my stature. So deadlift, I think, is up to 250, which is up from 240 a couple of weeks ago. So that's working. Back squat, we're gonna see how strong it is or isn't in this set here. If you're training really, really hard, really, really consistently, like a lot of people 
you know, they just go demon mode and then they're in the gym for months and months on end and they never really take a break. You have to understand if you are training hard, and this applies to people who actually are training hard, not people who think that they're training hard when they train like fairies. You have to understand that if you're pushing your limits all of the time, you're gonna be gaining an element of fatigue over the course of weeks and months. When you start to experience little niggles, when lifts just aren't progressing as much as they should, it might be a good idea to just take a couple of days away from the gym, even a week or two. Just something to bear in mind. High blood pressure, cardiovascular disease. But I can, bit, but I can squat five plates. Yeah, but you'll die when you're 40. Train insane or remain the same. I swear it's because city gym's actually warm and not because I'm a sweaty pig. I got a comment the other day on TikTok and they were like, I swear down I saw you bench 180 on this app before. You did see me bench 180 on the app before. I did it last February. As I was saying to Jay, I was 12 kilos heavier than what I am now. Being able to bench 180 kilos this time around means more from two aspects. Number one is the fact that I'm going to pause it on my chest, which is going to assert complete and utter dominance over the 180 kilos. But number two is the fact that I'm going to be a lot lighter in terms of body weight, which means that my relative strength will have increased. It'll be a much more impressive feat to bench 180 kilos paused at 100 kilo body weight than it would be to touch and go 180 kilos at 110 kilo body weight. Okay, so now we move on to the action. Accessories, barbell incline press, two to three sets, six to 12 reps, one to two reps in reserve, AKA failure. It's funny, because Jay must have spoke for 15 minutes straight about the need for knee sleeves. And I was just like, wait, how long does it take to put them on? He was like, oh, five to 10 minutes before you get into your working sets. I was like, that's enough of a reason for me not to wear them. And now fast forward. Half an hour and my knees are fucking caved in. I simply choose to not have knee pain. <laughs> I either didn't rest enough before I got cracking into that, or my strength on the incline is not where it used to be. That's 120 kilos, six really ugly repetitions. But we're gonna keep the weight on. Ain't no bitch. A lot of people beat themselves up if their strength on an exercise, when they do it in a different order, is not where it is compared to when they do it fresh. If you find yourself on an occasion where you have to do that exercise for whatever reason, third or fourth in the session, you have to be okay with the fact that your strength just isn't going to be comparable to where it would be if you were doing that exercise fresh. Vanilla Gorilla merch coming soon. Coming soon. <laughs> Zero sales. You, you would have sold out if your voice didn't break advertising it. Shout out Dean Casey for the immaculate V three times in a row. The man never lets me down. Now for the awkward part where myself and Jay just stand in silence. I look at the wall, pretend like I'm concentrating for the next set. Jay keeps the camera rolling just in case there's any highlights that he misses. <laughs> I've had about 15 minutes rest and a piss before I've gotten onto my third set of incline bench press. Very curious to see how much better my performance is. So the last set I got, first set I got six, second set I got five. Let's see how many I can get with this. Not too bad. I won't be doing that again. Next, we move on to a T-bar or a seal row. It's gonna be a seal row, because we don't have a T-bar row. Okay, so all these exercises are six to 12 reps, give or take, doesn't really matter where you fall in with, within that, as long as you get to like, pretty much to fader. So, seal row, six to 12 reps. Again, one to two reps in reserve, but who the fuck actually goes one or two reps in reserve? That is too difficult to get back in. That's also what she said when she was disappointed with my performance. Oh, it's too difficult to get back in. Oh, I'm, I'm too dry. Oh, oh shut up, bitch. 
<laughs> oh, I'm tired. I want to go to sleep. Oh, I don't want to have to shower afterwards. I don't have sex. Because I don't wank and I think it's haram behavior. Prior to last month, I had never hired a coach really in any realm. So no specific lifting coach, no specific business coach. Over the last couple of weeks, that has changed on two fronts. Number one, I hired Gar Ben to write me a powerlifting program to get me to that 180 kilo bench press. I've also hired a business mentor as well. So number one, it grounds you in objectivity. Yes, you're, you think you're capable of one thing, but a coach goes, okay, that may be the case, but let's start off at a, at a lower benchmark, at a lower baseline, and we'll build to that point from there. I feel like I'm working hard, which I am. It's not in any coherent direction. So what a coach's most important role is providing you with a structure, providing you with accountability. So, so boxes essentially to tick each and every week. It's going to get you to where you want to be, whereas you can have a go at it yourself and you may do very, very well, but how efficient are you going to be on your own? How efficient are you going to be without a clear, coherent structure? Is there a manner in which you could do that a little bit better? And I would argue that by signing up to the fitness app, that's exactly what the case will be. Was is a testament to the thought that Gar and City Gym put into their programs. He didn't just go, right, we're just going to get your bench press up, so we're going to do just bench press and maybe one accessory. So he has given me quite a decent amount of volume to at least maintain the muscle mass that I have so that I can balance, and this is going to obviously improve adherence if I'm enjoying the sessions that I'm doing, so I can balance obviously the prioritization of getting those lifts up specifically, but also having an element of the bodybuilding training that I'm used to that's going to make me enjoy the sessions a little bit more and hence stick to them for a lot longer or be more likely to stick to them. Last exercise, triceps. So nearly every single physique shot that I post on TikTok, I get a rake of people saying, would you ever compete? Would you ever do a bodybuilding competition? And the answer is no, because I think it's zesty as fuck, number one. It is literally a load of dudes showing off their ass on stage. Let's not, let's not overlook that fact. I've seen plenty of people doing physique updates and they pull their jocks up their holes so you can see their bare ass cheeks, man. That, to me, is a little bit zesty. Second to that is the fact that right now, the physique that I have right now, fairly lean, got good vascularity, very, very defined abs and all of that. But alongside that, my training feels good. It's not too sluggish. It's not too, like the last thing that I would want is to come in here to dread every single session that I do and to ultimately have an inferior quality of life. Right now, I can still technically eat what I want, but I still have to be conscious of doing the dog on it. So I do have to be conscious, but it's not so excessive that there's things that I won't eat or I'll just refuse to eat. But if I was to get leaner, I'd just be so much more dialed in. I'd be so much hungrier and for me, when I'm dieting, I do get a little bit moody. I'm not the nicest person in the world to be around. So all in all, would I do a physique competition? Hell fucking no. But a lot of people just drift into bodybuilding competitions because they get into the gym, they build a bit of muscle, they lose a bit of fat, then someone suggests, oh, do you compete? And then they start getting into their head, oh, is this something that I should do? Then they follow down a path of what I feel is a very kind of unhealthy hobby and unhealthy sport, if you want to call it that. And that is my personal opinion on the situation. I am at the optimal body composition for me from the perspective perspective that I look good with my shirt off and still enjoy my quality of life. At the weekend, I'm going to London for a couple of drinks and I'm going to be eating out quite a bit and I'm going to be able to enjoy that without having it a negative consequence in terms of my body composition. I'm able to run a 5k non-stop at a fairly decent pace and intensity. I'm able to show up and do a boxing session, a CrossFit session. I'm also in a position where I can progress on my bench press, I can progress on my deadlift, I can progress on my squat. So if I was to dive even further, a lot of those things are going to very quickly become compromised and then hence that is going to not improve the quality of my life but reduce it. And I really do think that as much as you may have built muscle, as much as you may have lost fat, I just see a lot of people go down that bodybuilding rabbit hole and some don't come out of it. So we're here with Jamie for our last session before Jamie heads off to Thailand. So we're going to make this one a good one. All right, let's go. Let's get in our stance again. That's good, elbows in nice and tight. Keep the looseness, no punching like the way we always start. That's a good shot. Thank you.
Don't touch that. Yeah, look at that. Good. That's it. Pop, pop, that's it. Good. That's it. Boom. Push. Go. Push. Push. Go. Again. Push. That. Push. Push. That's the boxing session over and done with. I'm gonna end up the video here. I was gonna take it back to the house, but it can't be fucking arse. Too hot, too sweaty, too tired. Great session as always, and Jamie, I want to wish him the best of luck in Thailand. He'll be back for sure. Next video will be in Thailand. Yeah. yeah. That's what the next video that Jamie will feature in will be probably in Tiger Mai Thai somewhere in Thailand. Make sure to drop the video a quick like if you haven't done so already, post notifications, all that good stuff, and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one.